Hey, John Beal, this is Rory. Can you hear me? Oh, there's Sam. This is Samuel Paz. I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Never, not a disappointment. It <laughs> just was reading what was on the screen. So I was kind of surprised uh, to see his name. Good to see you. So, so Rory, I made you a co-host in case you want to present anything or in case we have another person yeah. So Andrew Bauer is, uh, he's our client from True Leave. He's going to do most of the presentation. I'm not going to present anything. I'll just kind of introduce him and, okay. and then have a few words and then I'll, we'll, um, we'll both be available for questions too, but he should be hopping on. We just were talking. He's, um, he's in, Di <laughs> he's in Disneyland with his family. So he's going back to his room and going to present so i'm good the beauty of zoom All right, guys, how's everybody doing today? Good to, you. Good to see you. That was my casual way of testing my audio. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bauer, so I, I made you a co-host so you can okay. share your screen if necessary. Cool. Yeah, I got the, the PDF ready or the PowerPoint ready to fire up at the appropriate time. Sounds good, thank you.
It's six o'clock, so we'll get started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's public hearing. My name is John Urino. I'm the zoning examiner for the city of Tucson. We have one case on the docket this evening. It's case TP ENT 10230041, Harvest Tucson. We'll proceed in the following manner. First, I will ask Mr. Paz to give a brief staff report. Then I will ask the applicant or the applicant's representative if they would like to make a presentation. Then I will ask to hear from anyone in the audience who would like to make, uh, give any testimony or make any comments on the proposed special exception use. Uh, and then I'll turn it back over to the applicant to see if they have anything further they want to add. So with that, Mr. Paz, would you please present the staff report? Sure, thank you. This is a special exception request by Rory Juniman of Lazarus and Sylvan on behalf of PMP Hospitality and True Leaf Cannabis. The site is zone C2 commercial and located northwest of Star Pass Boulevard and I-10 and at 1010 South Freeway. This proposal is within an existing multi-tenant building. The project team held an on-site in-person meeting on October 19th at 6 p.m. This special exception is to allow the relocation and expansion of a previously approved marijuana dispensary as permitted in the Unified Development Code. The request relocates the existing dispensary from the Northwest suite to the Southern suite within the same building, increasing their operation size from 1,200 square feet to 3,758 square feet as allowed by the Unified Development Code. There will be minimum changes to the building and no additional building height. The special exception request is consistent with Plan Tucson and the Kruger Neighborhood Plan. The request is also in compliance with the performance criteria of the Unified Development Code and subject to compliance with the attached preliminary conditions. Approval of the special exception request NC2 is, is appropriate. As of today, there are zero approvals and four protests recorded. Based on plan policy and the criteria of the Unified Development Code, staff supports the special exception request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pauls. Mr. Juman, would you like to be heard? Yeah, good evening, Mr. Urino. Um, first, I want to start off by thanking Ms. Paz for staff report. Um, so, oh, and for the record, 5983 East Grant Road in the city of Tucson. Uh, with me tonight from True Lead is Andrew Bauer, and he's actually going to do the majority of the presentation. I, I did want to sort of um, introduce him by um, by saying that this is a, a pretty unique case and that as Mr. Paz noted in his staff report that the dispensary has been in operation in this building since 2013, so uh, over 10 years. Um, the reason why we're here tonight is that Truly took over or acquired the dispensary a, a few years ago, and they want to uh, do some improvements to it. It's, it's a little run down, it's kind of small, and they've got the opportunity to do that within the same building. In 2022, when the mayor and council required that dispensaries go through this special exception land use process, that made their current use legal non-conforming. And you're probably familiar with the UDC. It's got some expansion provisions for legal non-conforming uses, but we, we couldn't make those work for what uh, truly wanted to do. Um, for for this expansion, the, the code requirements wouldn't allow it. So we're here tonight um, in in an unusual case in that we're we're literally moving feet within the same. I think it's a seventy five hundred square foot building. Um, it's also unique though in that they've been there for ten years. To our knowledge, there's really no issues with um, any of the surrounding residential. For the most part, this use faces kind of the, the I-10 freeway, um, but but you've sort of got the benefit of maybe a proof of concept that this use does work in this location. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Bauer to do the presentation, and then we'll both be available for um, questions at the end. Thank you, Mr. Drinman. Mr. Bauer, nice to meet you. Please start with an address for the record. Absolutely, uh, address is 4221. East Coconino Place, Chandler, AZ 85249. Thank you. Please go ahead. All right. Let's see if I can do it on the first try. All right. 
Uh, so I'm going to do my best to not repeat, repeat staff report, not repeat what Rory said, and uh, not to read from a PowerPoint. So with that, uh, you know, I'm Andrew Bauer with TrueLeave. Uh, I've been in cannabis for about three years now. Uh, I started with Harvest, uh, then TrueLeave came in and, and bought Harvest uh, in 2021. And we've been operating in the state as Harvest Truly since basically the beginning of the medical program. Uh, we are the, the largest operator in Arizona with 21 retail stores. Uh, as Rory mentioned, uh, Purple Med started operation in 2013. So this is a, a longstanding dispensary, but honestly, probably one of the first ones uh, with the 2013 start date. So uh, Truly is a multi-state operator. We have operations uh, Northeast, Southeast, uh, Arizona, Florida, Pennsylvania, uh, are kind of our main hubs with uh, Arizona and Florida really probably being the two that, that are we're most recognized for. Uh, current partnerships, uh, we're lucky enough uh, in the cannabis space to be able to partner within the community with some, some groups that sometimes aren't as recognized maybe, uh, a little bit more on the, I don't want to use the word fringe, but not, you know, the standard large food bank, but instead uh, groups like one for uh, one in 10, uh, check for a lump, things like that. So what we're able to do is either, you know, food drives or, or donation drives, things like that. So to be able to be a presence in the community and and kind of give back to the people that, that use our stores. Uh, as Rory mentioned and staff mentioned, this is a uh, existing property just off of this uh, I-10 here. Uh, 1010 South Freeway. It's moving from... Uh, the, the north side of the building to the south side of the building. And, and that's really the biggest change there. Uh, hours of operations stay the same, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Again, here's just another view of that shift um, with the top half being the current dispensary at about 1,200 square feet to the, the bottom half there. That's just a, a larger suite in the same building. Uh, one thing we just want to include in the deck uh, just to to have on record is all SELU standards and findings are met within this location, as well as the special use standards uh, around dispensary. So, um, you know, things like floor space, hours of operation, all that uh, this project meets and we're not looking for any exception or anything like that on this uh, project. The closest, uh, some of the sensitive use buffers, uh, you know, a school about 2,000 square, 2,000 feet away, rehab 3,000 feet, uh, closest park is 750 feet, and then the nearest dispensary is one and a half miles. But kind of one other thing that I think is just important to point out is those are all protected by, or not protected, but separated by the I-10. So there's a nice additional barrier there other than just linear feet. Uh, the goals and objective around this project, uh, Rory kind of said it best. We had the opportunity to have a dispensary up and running for 10 years in a location, see that it works, see that the, the numbers are good, and to be able to expand on that. And to be able to expand on the dispensary and update it to, you know, a 2024 look and feel is part of that move. So moving to that bigger space. Uh, this is the current space right now. Uh, the waiting area is on the left side. Uh, the dispense area is on the right. It is a, a pretty tight space compared to some of the other dispensaries. This is a, the floor plan of, of what the future dispensary would look like. Uh, without getting into, you know, the which way the doors swing, this is kind of what the latest True Leaf uh, dispensary floor looks like. It's much brighter. Uh, Everything is out and sealed. Anything on the floor there, just to make clear, that's all dummy product. There is no live product on the floor. Everything is kept in locked drawers or the safe behind the counter. So this, anything on that you see, like in a picture like this, this is our, our Tatum store. So this isn't an artist rendering. This is actually the Tatum store. All that in the case is dummy product. So it's empty. So there's no, there's less issue of theft. If somebody would like to take an empty box, we will not stop them. Uh, this is more the dispensing counter. So you can see there's things behind the counter and, uh, you know, in these glass cases, again, those are, that's just dummy product, but the, the live products behind the counter. So the bud tender will, you know, work with the patient or customer and get what they want and, and put it together in a sealed bag. Uh, so a big part of 
True Wave and, and dispensing cannabis in general is a commitment to safety and security. So we have a, a great history of working with law enforcement. Uh, they are out our at out at our stores to just kind of do check-ins, uh, you know, make sure they know staff, everything like that. And then on the the interior of the store, a big thing that we focus on is age age gating. Um, everybody's double check double verified, so your license is checked at the door. 21 only. Your license is then checked again at the dispensary counter. So if you find your way, you know, past the front door, you try to sneak in with another group before anybody's going to work with you at the dispensing counter, they're going to check your ID again. So there's that double age verification there. Uh, these are all things that are already in place. Uh, it is standard operating procedure for us. Uh, the, the one other thing that, that is kind of unique, I think, to cannabis that, that's worth noting is the cameras we use outside the facility give us 360 coverage and there there legitimately has been cases where local law enforcement has come to a dispensary because they are able to track somebody you know walking from a car or or uh, you know a store where they stole something and we can identify them walking past the cameras uh we have uh i can't remember exactly how long we have to hold on to video but it's quite some some time uh thanks to state uh rules so just to be able to partner with them I, again just safety security all those things are important to a cannabis company as a, any other company this is what we uh, talked about a minute ago that youth diversion and then employment uh luckily enough uh in cannabis it, it's kind of unique um if you ever go to a store and you watch the customer you know come in and out you'd be amazed it, it is every walk of life you could imagine. And because of that, when our hiring practices, you kind of see that at the people that take care of you. Um, I, I think of a woman at, at Costa Grande that's been there uh, about 10 years and she looks like my grandmother, but she is happy as could be and, and the customers can feel that. So our employment is usually local people that fit who's coming into the store. So that higher local is something that is actually important to us, not only from a company standpoint, but a, a consumer standpoint, it makes them feel more comfortable. And that's really, that's really all I have. Uh, Rory, anything else you want to add on top of that? You're on mute, Rory. Sorry about that. Uh, the only thing I did want to mention is that um, it may go, with that, go without saying, because of the the amount of time the dispensary has been in operation, it started off as a medical uh, medical dispensary and then dual use. Um, when when that law was passed, it is is not a social equity license that we're dealing with. This is a a dual use license. Okay, thank you. Um, would anyone else in the audience like to be heard? I if I may. Yes, you may. Please let's go ahead and please start with your name and address. Josefina Cardenas, 902 West 21st Street. Thank you very much, Ms. Cardenas. Go right ahead. I just wanted to also make a correction at the beginning of the presentation. It says Menlo Park, but the dispensary is in Barrio Kroger Lane. And uh, today I spoke with Mr. Patel, the owner of the property. And he mentioned about a meeting taking place on October 19th and that um, the host was there ready to greet neighbors with, with a meal. So I wanna appreciate that. Um, from the beginning in 2013, our elders were quite concerned of the dispensary coming in without a relationship, friendship, partnership, trust. So I'm sorry that this is carrying on and that um, communication, lack of communication still is in the, in the process. No? In, and even though I hear that notices were sent out, but it seemed like the association didn't know, Word One didn't know. So I would say it's a lot of, has to do with a lot of trust building, communication, conversation, and getting to know each other and knowing where where we stand. Our barrio is from seven generations. This year we get to celebrate our 103rd anniversary. Members were 
part of Barrio Viejo when that displacement happened with the um, construction of the TCC. So there's still a lot of hurt and heaven knows if there'll be healing. But I just wanted to bring it up that it just takes for us humans to, to communicate more. And uh, I know we try, but we just have to keep on trying. No? I did send an email of concerns and questions from former neighbors and uh, I hope um, we can help. And uh, I know if I'm not mistaken, this also goes to mayor and council. So hopefully by mayor and council will be more unified and our questions answered and that partnership, friendship, trust will be built. Gracias. Well, thank you very much for thank your participation you. this evening and congratulations on uh, your barrio's 103rd uh, year in existence. And that, that's certainly something to celebrate. Uh, and I, I did receive your email as well as the other uh, email and two protests that were filed. And I would ask Mr. Bauer or Mr. Juneman to uh, address a couple of the items that were raised there. Uh, you are correct, Ms. Cardenas, this will go. Uh, what I do at my level is make a recommendation, but then it goes on to the mayor and council for their decision. But I would ask Mr. Juneman or Mr. Bauer to, to respond to uh, two points that were raised. One, uh, maybe a little less interesting uh, than the other, but the first is simply there was concern raised about traffic and whether, uh, and I understand that the, you've been in, in business there for 10 years, so you probably know if there have been any problems, but I'd just like to know a little bit about what the inflow and outflow from the facility. Uh, I've been down in that part of town. I, I make it a case to go by the rezoning or special exception use sites. Uh, and I just know Tucson pretty well. Uh, so I just wanna make sure that there aren't additional steps that need to be taken that haven't been taken as far as traffic not uh, being encouraged to travel through the barrio as opposed to the frontage road uh, and beyond. So that's one point I'd ask you to address. The other point I'd ask you, ask you to address is the impact because the applicant here has been in business in this location, but other locations and in other places in the country, whether what the applicant has noticed about the impact of its stores on the uh, community that lives nearby, uh, whether there's many a detrimental impact or not. Uh, so if you could address those two points, I would appreciate it. Sure, and Mr. You know, I, I'll uh, I'll start off, and I can talk about traffic. I want to address a couple of points first, if that's okay, and then sure, of I'll turn it over to uh, to Andrew, who's probably more suited to answer the the question on the impact of maybe this store and other stores that they have. Um, the um, thank you, uh, Ms. Cardenas, for your your comments. The um, you mentioned the the Menlo Park. That's just their trade name. Uh, it's it, I think it's just a, a wider area and and isn't um, it, it isn't meant to specify the specific location. It's more of just kind of a trade name of the general location. Um, so uh, I I also did want to point out. You mentioned that um, Ward One wasn't noticed. Um, I, I sent an email to Ward 1 with our invitation before the neighborhood meeting. I sent one to uh, to them a few weeks ago as well. And I know staff um, did as well. So um, we we did our neighborhood meeting with the, the notices that were provided by staff, which is kind of our, our best way to, to, to let people know. So, um, you know, that uh, apologies if, if you didn't get one, but we we definitely sent them out and, and with the, the process that, um, that the city requires. So um, now on to your question, Mr. You know, about traffic. I'm going to share the overhead map, if that's okay. Uh, oh, I don't think I can share. Uh, Mr. Pause. 
if it's if I may, I'm sufficiently familiar with okay. the roads in that area that a, a, a verbal description would sure. be more so than accurate for me. You can share now. Okay. Uh, the uh, I'll just try it. It um, if you've been out there, Mister, you know you understand this is it's a pretty unusual site to access um, because it, there really is an access directly from the frontage road. Um, the access has to go down to Star Pass and make a U-turn uh, into to, to Farmington. But because of that, and because really at the end of the, of Farmington, almost the end of Farmington is the, the Motel 6 office and our dispensary current location and future location in this building, um, there, there really isn't any incentive for anyone to continue on into the neighborhood. And then when I went out and drove it and went into that neighborhood, it's a it's kind of a, a labyrinth back there. So I I just don't think that there's any um, uh, that that there's just no natural reason for any driver to do anything but use Farmington in and out to 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 the site. Uh, and that if they try there, it's I mean, I got lost back there. Um, it, it isn't, it, it, there isn't kind of a natural secondary route. It, it's really Farmington and that's, that's about it. So I, I don't anticipate um, there'll be any, any additional traffic issues other than what's out there today. We haven't heard that there are any. Um, and definitely by this, this change of just being within the building, that's not going to cause um cause any additional traffic issues. I don't uh, truly, I, I think is hopeful they'll get a little bit more business, but this isn't an expansion uh, with in mind of, of generating a lot more business. This really is an expansion um, so they can improve their site. The, the current, the, the pictures that Mr. Bauer showed um, are, are better looking, I think, than the, and, and make the, the current dispensary look larger. It is a pretty small site pretty cramped. And um, the main focus of this, again, isn't more business or more uh, customers. It's really making the existing customer experience better. So thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Bauer, you, you want to go ahead and answer the question about impact on the area? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to kind of continue piggyback off of that, Rory, too, that when Harvest was acquired about two years ago truly it came in and they've slowly been rebranding every store part of that rebranding and that investment is this the i'm i'm bad at tucson so i might call it the menlo park store uh the menlo park store before they can keep kind of rebranding and, and bring it up to quote unquote true leaf level is that that bigger site and so it, it what rory said is, is spot on they they really can't update that location that they're in now or, or we can't until a, a larger suite so uh just to, to add on to what rory was saying this is more about making the current customer feel better and and happier when they come to the store uh in terms of, of the neighborhoods we go into or the other communities honestly i don't really have a great example of a, a bad relationship happening um especially in Arizona, we have to operate in such tight confinement to the rules where it comes to, to odor, to, to noise, to hours of operation, all those things. If we step out of line, the state very much A wants to find us and B take away our license. And what that has caused is just to us to have to be good neighbors. It, it, it isn't an option. Uh, we have to work within the neighborhoods we're around uh anytime that we do a you know a, a special event or something you know everything gets run by the city all, all those things so one thing that does tend to happen on on a positive is sometimes our stores are forced into to areas other to where a walgreens might not want to go uh but by because of the rules of, of the zoning that we have to you know the certain setbacks we, we end up locating where we must. And when we do, we facelift the building. It's better lighting, better, uh, you know, fresh paint, clean signs, uh, security cameras, stuff like that. So we can take an area that potentially has seen some negative setbacks and make it a little bit better. Uh, you know, this Menlo Park location, we're just taking the store from where it is and moving it to the front so that it's easier for people to see. Understood. 
Well, thank you very much for your answer to, on that, Mr. Bauer. Uh, I'm going to uh, close the public hearing. And, you know, this is a little bit outside of my exact bailiwick, but now you've met Ms. Cardenas and you know the nearby community. Yep. It's a vibrant community in Tucson. And, uh, you know, once you meet somebody, perhaps a little more outreach would be something that would be beneficial to you and to the neighborhood. But 100%. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll Ms. reach out to her. Yeah, Mr. Arena, sure. I was going to mention that that if if uh, Ms. Cardenas is okay with it, I, I we have her email from uh, from her letter or from her email, I guess, and we we can reach out to her and 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 start that conversation, even if it's just to to put contacts, you know, put uh, put people together if there's issues. It's it's just it is good to 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 start that kind of conversation and that relationship. Well, I want to say again, I appreciate everyone's participation this evening, and uh, thank you for taking the time, and I hope everyone has a lovely evening. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night.